Hello and welcome to today's video. We are going to show you the uh, fruits of our efforts to this point. Uh, some stuff has happened off camera uh, and that's going to happen, especially with the weather being dicey today. So we're under a severe thunderstorm warning as you can tell by the bright sunshine and potentially a tornado watch. So if I get blown away during this video, remember to have fun. So <clears throat> we've been looking at the upper hull and getting it ready for masking and spraying for the uh, white, brown, and yellow of Tiger Force, but I wanted to show you that the lower hull is basically done, and this is where we couldn't take the wheels off, um, but I masked the living bejesus out of this thing, and I sprayed black around. There are some touch-ups required on the black, but the yellow is, let's say, 99% preserved, um, and I'll touch that up if I need to later. Uh, but you can see the end result, uh, and it matches our conceptualization of this design where the wheels are going to the road wheels here are going to be all black with a yellow hull and just to give you a hint of what's to come is this is all the masking tape removed just from this alone this was completely mummified all the yellow parts were completely masked off um, for the uh, spraying of the black I will have to do some touch-ups and that's no problem because as we said before uh, touch-ups are just part of the process so the lower hull is virtually complete I've already started clear coating it. I've also had a change in design taste uh, in the conceptualization. I had the cannon as red, but I found that it was just too much. Uh, if you reference the uh, Tiger Stink, the Tiger Force Jeep, you'll see that the only red thing on it are the four missiles that come with it. Everything else is yellow and black with the brown and white as well. So I've decided to make uh, this entirely yellow. Um, I've sat it together, like I've pieced it back together, and it looks much better that way. So I'm just staying off the red for now. Having said that, the cupola is going to be the only accent that's all red. And you'll see here that what I've done is I've actually scratch built a cannon to replace the missing cannon up front. Uh, if you're a little intimidated by that process, by all means order a 3D printed one off of your favorite online auction site. But all this is, is several lengths of styrene tube, of plastic tube, you can get it at any hobby or craft store. And all I've done was take successively smaller tubes and insert them into one another to roughly make the same shape. It's not going to be exactly the same because I just basically did it uh, without any reference, but it certainly serves the purpose and now the turret looks complete. And when we sit it on there, we see that it works very well. So I'm not uh, concerned about that at all and uh, super happy with it. So, put that off to the side for now. And we were talking about masking. So I had that soft mask, uh, which I made from rolled tape on the white part of the nose here. And I was about to work on the brown and the yellow. I had a bit of a eureka moment last night and I tried a new way of doing it. It's still a soft mask, but it's completely different in form. So rather than using masking tape per se, I mean, certainly use it to protect the solid color you want on the back and the front. But what I did was I copied what a lot of uh, spray paint street artists do, and I used a piece of cardboard um, and held it just above the, the hull itself. So what I did was, pardon my reach here, I took the hull and I placed it down on the ground like that. I took a flat piece of cardboard and I held it just above the uh, hull of the tank. And then I sprayed like that. And what that does is it basically catches everything on this side of the cardboard on the cardboard itself and leaves a feathered edge. And with uh, somewhat mixed results, um, you can see that we did a nice feathered line there. There is some mess to it. Uh, and this brings me to my point where, um, that was my first time trying it, so I'm calling it successful. Um, so by all means, use that. So all it is, is shaking up your rattle can as per my short little video there on how to properly shake a rattle can and then holding it above where you want to spray it and spraying it down and it will create a soft edge roughly where that is you have to spray it 90 degrees to that cardboard and just and then make sure that when you're doing that in this case you do the side then the top and the other side now the thing with spray paint is that it's not designed to do soft masking per se yes you can do it um, but unfortunately, given the volume and the pressure at which spray paint comes out, you can't get super nice soft lines that you get 
with an airbrush, per, uh, for example. Uh, and later on, uh, we'll be doing a project with an airbrush to show you the difference. Um, and that's not to dissuade you from using spray paints, especially if you know an airbrush might be out of your reach for right now, and that's totally cool. Um, this is to show you that it can be done, and with some practice, I could probably dial this in pretty well. And if you're discouraged by the results, don't be, because if you look at actual Tiger Force vehicles, they're pretty fudged as well. So basically, by taking the spray paint, yes, you're giving yourself the ability to give a somewhat soft edge, um, but you just won't necessarily be able to replicate what you can do with an airbrush because that's scaled down even further to give you super fine lines and nicely soft feathered edges and whatnot. Um, so if you are looking to upgrade to an airbrush, I'll do a video on that and we'll have a chat about airbrushing. It's not as uh, difficult as you think. Um, there is a learning curve, but uh, I'll show you some quick tips that'll make your life a lot easier. So in the meantime, Let's do a check here with all the different pieces and see how it's all coming together. So the hull's not going to sit flush here because I still have the motor and everything taped off. But we're just going to place it, place it loosely on top with our turret and then our cupola. And as you can see, it's coming along rather nicely. Certainly nothing to shake a stick at and I'm quite happy with the results. So where do we go from here? Well, by now, you should be close to the same phase. And like I said, we'll just go over it one more time just so we're clear. When you put your colors on, before you even try the soft mask first, I want you to practice on a piece of cardboard just like this. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna use a bolder color here, uh, in this case red, just so that you can see uh, what we're doing. And something I forgot to mention earlier is if you do like the colors I'm using, uh, for this custom. I'm using uh, Rust-Oleum Apple Red. Where's the English side? There we go. Satin Apple Red. Uh, and I quite like it and it's easy to touch up with uh, Citadel paints. Uh, if you are feeling a little adventurous, it's a Rouge Pomme Satiné. Okay, so there's the red we're going to use. The yellow I've been using is Krylon Color Max uh, Gloss Sun Yellow. And it comes out quite nicely. And the brown I've been using is made by a company I've never seen before. Uh, the name is on here somewhere? Yeah, it's called Twig. I was going to call it Petrified Desert Poop, but yeah, it's called Twig. Um, you might find this maybe a little too chocolatey for your taste. The brown for Tiger Force is uh, red brown. Honestly, the best color for it is Burnt Sienna, but I pushed that out of my airbrush. Uh, so finding a, a spray can mixture, don't be shy to uh, think outside the box when you're trying to name the color. So if it looks red, brown, or orange to you, like a dark orange or whatever, then look at that. Don't just say, oh, it's brown, and then try and find a brown. It might be a different color altogether that just matches. So try and match the paint cap to what you're looking for, not the name of the color. So if I haven't confused the living bejesus out of you, let's carry on with this. So. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line of red right here just to show you what it's like. So I've shaken up the can. We'll do a couple of test sprays over here. We got good flow. And as you use your spray cans, don't forget every once in a while to unclog the cap because paint will build up on there. And if it dries in a weird pattern, your paint might come out all splattery and spray paint's already hard enough to control. So all I'm going to do is basically my knuckles are going to be on the cardboard here on the, on the lower surface. And I'm holding up the paper, let's call it an inch and a half, maybe two inches above the cardboard. And I'm gonna spray a straight line down, favoring where the cardboard edge is. And I'm spraying over here just to see what the line looks like so I know what. And it's better to start more over here than over here first. We're trying to alleviate the paint from getting underneath the, the uh, template. So here we go. And there's your line right there. So we'll do it again. And there it is right there. So it is quite feathered. Um, the thing to remember with the spray paint is that it does come out in bigger globules. Because when you spray paint, basically what it does is the propellant mixes with the paint, it atomizes it or turns it into tiny droplets and then barfs it out the nozzle. 
Uh, the airbrush does the same thing, only it's a finer mist, and you can change air pressure and all sorts of neat tricks to uh, change what that line looks like. So for a soft edge, that doesn't look too, too bad. I'll flip it up here so you can see it a little bit better. But you can see that there. I'm still getting some splatter on the other side. It's unavoidable because it is spray paint. Um, and if you hold the spray can too far away, you're not going to get any paint down there. It's only going to, it's going to dry before it hits the surface and you're going to get bigger dots. So you want to find that nice sweet spot where it's nice and close. And I highly recommend practicing on cardboard or scrap plastic first before you hit your vehicle. Um, if you do run into an error, because I did go back and forth quite a few times with this, uh, remember the rule from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, okay? Don't panic. Just go back and forth and do it until you're happy. Um, at one point you will have to go, okay, I think that's as good as I'm going to get because you might be repeating the same mistakes over again, and that's fine. I'm totally happy with this. I might maybe touch it up a bit just to push my luck, but uh, at the end of the day, that's the reality of dealing with spray paint. Uh, it's certainly not to dissuade you from using spray paint, but honestly, after a while, if you do enough customs, you'll realize that getting an airbrush and using that is actually cheaper in the long run than it is buying a new color of spray paint every time you either try and guess a color or um, you do a bunch of customs. So that's where we are right now for the uh, Tiger Force Mobat. So what I've got to do is I've got to find a flat coat somewhere and I'm going to flat coat this whole thing to protect it. What this is also going to do is make this gloss yellow flat so we can start painting on the Tiger Stripes which is coming up next. So. Maybe look for a video shortly, coming up shortly. If not, in the meantime, practice your lines before you hit it on the plastic. And we will see you on the next video. And remember to have fun.